When you look at the map of Africa, you see a lot of man-made borders that mean nothing. And most of this was done in the Scrabble of Africa by the Europeans. So most of this border you're seeing is designed by the Europeans themselves. If you go back a couple centuries, the map you're going to see is completely different. One of the countries in the southern part of Africa that was born in the year 1966 is Botswana. Botswana is a completely landlocked country and it has no access to the ocean. In the year 1966, when Botswana gains independence from the British, this man becomes the brand new president, Sertesa Kama. When Botswana first gained independence, it was known as the poorest country in the world. And in the entire country, there was only 19 kilometers of paved roads. Something that was worse, in a country where more than half a million people are living, there's only a hundred people that have a diploma. And the people that got the diploma didn't get it from Botswana. They got it from outside the country, just like the president Sertesa Kama. So the country pretty much had nothing going for it. It had no foundation, so the president was forced to get loans from Britain so they can feed the people. But Kama was very much different from other African leaders. He wanted to figure out on how to run this country like a business. Like what do we have to offer? We have all this land, all these people, but why are we so poor? There has to be a way to get out of this. He first looked at two countries in Africa, Rhodesia, which turned into Zimbabwe later on, and Burkina Faso. These countries were thriving at this time, but they were totalitarian governments that pretty much ruined the experience and treated their people like hostages and slaves. So he didn't want to go that route. He didn't want power and be a dictator. He wanted the country to thrive and its people. So he was always thinking of a way where he can make money with the land and people he has. Because that's the stepping stone on how to make a country start to thrive. He first got a couple of experts together and asked what type of resources do we have in this country that could make us rich. They came back with a report and said we have a lot of minerals, we have a huge amount of wildlife, and alongside all that we have a lot of cows. Serta Sakama said, that's it, this is all we got. He knew it was going to be harder than he thought, but he didn't lose hope. He said, we'll begin with the mines. We don't have any mining supplies. We don't even have 10 pickaxes. So the best method we could use is that get a loan from Western countries like England. And instead of using it in other places, let's buy a whole lot of mining equipment. We use all this mining equipment, hire all our people that are unemployed. And with the money, we could pay off the debt and make people money because now they have a job that continues to bring them income. Sayata Sakama was really different from other African leaders because when they would get a loan, they would use it on their own lavish lifestyles. But Kama wanted to invest it in his country and his people. And the most important thing was that in his government, there was zero corruption. After a couple of years, Botswana is a mining country and all this supply is going to rich countries in the West like Europe and America. The only profit that the president wanted to spend on was brand new schooling and hospitals. Two things that did not exist in Botswana. Seta Sakama knew exactly what he was doing because he was in the startup phases of a very successful country. He wanted proper hospitals so people just don't die from an infection. And he needed school because people were not educated at all. Most of the people in the country were illiterate and only a hundred people had diplomas. In under five years, meaning until the year 1970, Botswana saw the largest growth in economic history. 
This alone made Western countries in Europe and the United States to want to invest in this country because they realized that there is not a lot of corruption unlike other African countries. So that promoted more investments. Different factories were built by different companies in this country and these were proper factories. It wasn't like the other third world factories where children are working in very unsafe environments. And this was the very first time that the first university was built in Botswana. A lot of people say that Serta Zakama was brought by the British, but a lot of people say that doesn't matter because a whole lot of African leaders were brought by them. But this man ran the country better than anyone because he didn't have any corruption and he only wanted his country to thrive. This country is growing rapidly. But alongside this country, there's two very racist nations, the state of Rhodesia and the Union of South Africa apartheid regime. These are both white governments that are very anti-black and they're not a fan of an African leader running a country properly and they're thriving. What specially pissed them off even more is that Mr. Kama's wife was white, which is a big no-no in their type of lives. And that's why they send their agents, aka terrorists, to the borders of Botswana to start harassing the citizens. It was because of this that Botswana was forced to finally form their first army. The new generation that's being born in Botswana is 180 degrees to the last generation because they finally have access to proper education and doctors and that means the infant death rate is much lower than ever before. Basically in under 10 years, Kama made Botswana the most advanced African country. But unfortunately, he can't stay the president forever because he dies at the age of 59 because of diabetes. He was the president for only 14 years. But the good news is that his government and his people that were always around him lacked corruption. So their vision was the same as Sir Tesehama. They only wanted the country to thrive rather than their own government. In only 14 years of presidency, Kama declined the newborn mortality by 90%. He basically made tuberculosis go extinct something that was very deadly to the people of Botswana. He also had STDs under control, especially HIV AIDS. And this is a time where AIDS is everywhere in Africa, but not in Botswana. The most significant difference was that the GDP of Botswana had grown by 10,000%. And you have to know that this 10,000% in only 14 years is a world record in world history. No other country has even came close to this. The foundation that was built for Botswana by Serte Sakama was so proper that many years later, the year 2024, the country is still thriving and it's probably one of the best countries in Africa right now. In terms of corruption in Africa, the least amount of corruption is in the country of Botswana. The country in 1966 where only 100 people had diplomas, which was got by countries outside of Botswana, is now in 2024 the most literate country in Africa. You have to know that before Gaddafi, Libya was the most literate country in Africa but that place is taken by Botswana now. A country that's only 58 years old is the best in many aspects in the continent of Africa. But even with all that, Botswana is successful. What do you guys think? And why do you think that is? 